Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. We are doing two shower control valves today, but actually we're going to be doing something called a remodeling plate. A remodeling plate is when we take the old valve, and instead of breaking all the tiles, we're going to cut out a template, put in a new valve, and then we're going to have a special chrome plate that goes around it, which makes it look nice and neat and fancies it up. And that way you don't have to break all the tiles around, which is what the traditional way of replacing a shower valve would be. So so it is a very intrusive procedure, but it's done in such a way where it's kind of like a surgery. You come in, you cut only what you absolutely must, replace it, and then patch it up and make it look nice and neat. So it's a pretty cool procedure. We're gonna be doing two today, one over here, and also one over here as well. So let's get straight into it. Peeps, do me a favor. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down below, hit that bell notification, hit that thumbs up, and let's go do some delicious plumbing. So peeps, the first step of our work is to get the space prepared for the first major tool we're planning to work with. In this video, you're gonna see us use the roto zip to cut out the template we're about to trace. So we first shut the water, remove all the major pieces of the previous valve, then we cut the template for tracing, then we trace the template, and then we move on to the next phase. In other words, this is the start of the demolition portion that takes place before we begin our building process. show you the progress this is the template the reason why we normally cut out the two edges is so that we can place them over the two cartridges and over the two handles and once you get the template what we're attempting to do is raise it up as high as possible so that we can still hide these holes uh, with the plate that's going to go on top but we need the highest height because the new trim plate which goes over here is going to be a little bit larger than this hole and we got to make sure it doesn't touch the spout down here that's why we raise it as high up as possible that's why i cut these as thin as i do so that i can get that height as maximum as possible so now we're going to use the roto zip we're going to zip this out and we're going to be able to replace the valve doing so one thing i gotta say right off the bat is we tried to turn off the valves inside the other washroom but unfortunately they're not holding right now so we still have a little bit of a drip coming out which tells us that there's a chance that we're not going to be able to do the plate in the other room because we need to first rectify the issue of the valves but in order to do the valves we're going to potentially need to do a building shutdown let's go So one thing that I have to say is I have such a fun time using the RotoZip, but this is a tool that took me a very long time to get comfortable with. What you'll notice is, is that the RotoZip has a tendency to bounce. What that means is, is you'll penetrate the tile, but if you're not holding it sturdy, it will actually bounce from side to side and break the bit in the process. I've done this many times and sometimes multiple times in the same job. So here are my pointers. I know it doesn't look like it right now as you're watching this, but I am literally choking the RotoZip between my two hands with a lot of force. This helps provide stability as you're using it, and it reduces the amount of balancing that takes place. Secondly, I try to maintain constant tension on the material I'm working with at all times. I do this also because the most common times the tool balances is when the tool can decide which direction it can go. In other words, you have to be sturdy between your two hands and very deliberate in the direction of your choosing. Only then will the rotozip follow your guidance calmly. 
The next steps are to take the old valve out without changing the dimension of the pipes. In other words, we try our best to keep as much of the pipework as close to what it was when we first found it. So we sweat out the old valve by heating it up and cleaning off the old solder when we are done. You'll then see me add two couplings and a short piece of pipe. I do this because we want to raise the height of the new mown valve coming in as I said earlier. It's a pretty intricate procedure but well worth it for the end result. Quick intermission. So I just finished soldering the valve. I'm about to go have a bit of lunch. But one thing I want to talk about, and you might already notice, is my dad's very active in this scene. And here's something that I've noticed over the years. I'm eight years in, three years licensed, 
And even to this day, my journeyman always finds reasons to correct me. Now, this used to upset me. I used to turn to dad and go, I know this already. Why are you telling me this? I know this already. Why are you telling me this? Dad and I don't work a lot together anymore. So even though he's sitting there over my shoulder saying how he would have done it differently, there's something still magical about him always being my journeyman. So there's still moments in there where he goes, don't do this, do it this way. And I go, oh, yeah. And then there are other times where he goes, don't do this, do it this way. And I go, no, 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 no. This is not the way I like to do it. I like doing it my way, so back off. You know what I'm saying? So that's just something to keep in mind. I'm not sure where you're at in your apprenticeship, but even when you're a journeyman or journeywoman, you might find that you're being corrected by your journeyman or journeywoman simply because they are always years ahead of you and they're also learning themselves and they're also passing down knowledge. And you know, I do think from time to time they think to themselves, hey, don't forget who taught you all the good stuff, okay? Don't, don't take all these skills and walk away thinking that you don't owe me a little bit of credit so give credit where credit's due my dad's a great journeyman pain in the butt sometimes but i love him i'm gonna have lunch and we're gonna finish off this job let's go so this is the final phase when we start putting our trim on. One thing that you're going to notice is that I use my finger to plug the pipe in order to divert the water to the shower head. I do this purely for testing purposes. We need to pressurize the shower head to ensure our soldering was sound. Peeps, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button down below. We're doing our best to get to 10k by the end of 2021. I know we're a couple of thousand short, but I still have some hopes to get our numbers as high as possible before the new year. Smash that thumbs up button, share with friends, and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.